Hi friends, welcome to Arc Tutorials. This is React JS full tutorial series for absolute beginners. If you are here to learn React from scratch and you have no clue what React is, this is a series for you because here you will learn end to end from scratch about React JS. Not only learn but also master and build apps during this entire series. Today is the part one of the series. Today we'll talk about a little bit about React JS. We'll talk about introduction. We'll talk. We'll give an overview, and also we'll talk about some pros and cons of React JS. Let's get started. So the first question that comes to mind is, what exactly is React JS? React JS is a front-end library developed by Facebook. Whenever you hear the words mean stack or mern stack, right? So whenever you say mean stack, it would be based on Angular. Whenever you hear the mern stack, which is M E R N stands for MongoDB, Express, React, and Node. So R stands for React, which is nothing but React JS. React JS is a JavaScript library used for building reusable UI components. React makes it painless to create interactive UIs. No matter how complicated they are, you can easily develop them. The development, the maintenance, and the scalability aspect is all taken care of by React. React makes it easy to manage and build views for states, state management, which means if your view has to have different behavior based on the different states it is going through, those are all easily managed as React supports it natively. React has a component-driven architecture, which means the smaller pieces add up to become a complex UI piece, right? So if you have a complex UI, those are all broken down into smaller components, which is very much easy to develop and to extend and to maintain. That's why React is getting so much popularity in the developer world. It's easy to learn, it's e easy to adapt, and a lot of teams are quickly moving their developers to React just for these reasons. Let's talk about some of the features of React.js. Some of the standout features for React are JSX, right? So JSX is a JavaScript syntax extension. It isn't necessary to use uh, JSX in React development actually, but it's recommended, right? Um, <coughs> and then we have declarative, which means design simple views for each state in your application. So React will automatically efficiently render the right components based on the data that is changing or the states that are changing. React is all about components. I told you earlier that it's a component driven architecture, which means we need to think everything as a component. These small things will become add up into a larger screen, right? So it is bottom to top approach. Unidirectional data flow and flux, which means React implements one way data flow, which makes it easy to reason about your app. Flux is a data pattern that helps us keeping your data unidirectional. And React is in a license which is um, CCBY, which means that it's free to use, free to extend. You can use it in your commercial applications and much, much more. Now let's talk some of the advantages or pros, right? So some of the pros that you can think of is um, it the React JS uses virtual DOM, uh, right? Which is a nothing but a JavaScript object. Now this helps in the underlining application performance increases drastically since it's using JavaScript virtual DOM rather than the actual DOM of the uh, browser, <coughs> right? And then they can also be used on the client and server side as well as with other frameworks. A lot of times, like I said, we will use MERN stack, which means we will use React, Node, Express, all of these frameworks together to make an application. You, in fact, you can use a lot of other front-end frameworks also with React. So it plays well with other React, uh, other frameworks as well. Now, component and data patterns improve readability, which helps you to maintain the code. When, if you're talking about one or two components, it's easy to say that we cannot differentiate that complexity. But when you talk about a real-time enterprise application, Obviously, uh, the code base becomes huge and it's difficult to maintain, it's difficult to relate, it's difficult to read. But component and data patterns will definitely help us in keeping the application sanity in terms of checking smaller pieces of code. Let's talk some of the cons of React. So 
React is only for the UI layer, right? Uh, so which means that we still have to work with our backend, routing, some other dependent modules needs to be used. I think that's the biggest uh, con I would say of React. Now using inline templating and JSX, which might seem little awkward to some developers, right? If you're new, you might find some syntax little awkward and uh, why is it written inside this whole thing? Why are we writing the HTML along with the component class? Those may be questions you might face as a beginner, but that is a relatively smaller challenge, so don't worry on that. So now, before uh, we close this particular um, episode, I would just want to give you some motivation that there are a lot of large companies like Facebook, Walmart, Uber, Air Airbnb, Instagram, Udemy, Netflix, New York Times. These are all large uh, companies which are aggressively using ReactJS which means they have seen a lot of potential, they have seen a lot of uh, capability in what it can do. And there is no reason why you should not be learning uh, React.js, right? It's lot, it's red hot in market. If you're looking for a career job change or a career path change, you should definitely consider learning React.js. All right, so that being said, uh, we are into the close this particular episode. If you like this video, give a thumbs up, do like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In the next episode, we will start with installation of React.js in our local machine and we'll start coding. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next episode where we'll learn about installing React.js 